So next up, moving swiftly along, we've got Anya Byrne, who um, looks ready. So uh, she'll be talking about, uh, or rather saying, get the simple things right, organizing your bright space page. Perfect. Thanks very much for the invitation to take part today. And also massive thank you for organizing all of these workshops over the last few months. They've been extremely useful. So um, today I'm going to talk to you about just getting, as I said, the simple things right. Because what I found was that students really responded to simple things like organization. So the module feedback was they're the things they focus on, the things that they appreciated the most. Um, so I'm sure a lot of the things I'm going to discuss today you'll already be familiar with, um, but hopefully there's something in here that you perhaps hadn't thought of doing. And like Lois, these are low tech te um, practical suggestions. Um, so hopefully um, it will be easy for you to implement something similar. And my uh, presentation is also going to be low tech. I'm just going to be doing a demo of my Brightspace page. Um, so at UCD, we use Brightspace as our virtual learning environment, but most of the things I'm going to talk about can be implemented on um, any virtual learning environment. So at the moment, I'm viewing my page as a student, so just um, so you get the experience that a student would have. Um, and the first thing you have here on your Brightspace page is a calendar, which um, often gets overlooked and people don't see it as particularly useful. But I, um, this semester, I set up all of my kind of live events as reoccurring calendar events so that students, when they log in, they can see, oh, I have a live lecture coming up on the 22nd at 2 p.m. and then they have a tutorial. And similarly, all the assignments and things like that, the deadlines get automatically added in. So you can see they have a deadline for assignment three is due on the, um, 1st of April. And I think students comment that this really helped them um, in terms of keeping track of what's expected of them in the coming week. As often in the kind of online virtual learning environment, it's hard to remember like, when the lectures are and um, there's a lot going on and you're not seeing your, you know, your peers every day and saying, oh, are you coming down to that lecture that we have? And um, so it's a good way to help them keep track of that. And on that note, I suppose it's important to highlight that it's useless putting all of these things in place unless you tell students they're there. So the first week of term, I did a similar demo, demo like this with the students to say, here in the calendar, you'll find all of your events. And similarly, you know, we'll be talking about, um, sorry, updates we posted as Brightspace announcements. So make sure you come back um, and check that regularly. Another thing um, that I found useful was so in my learning, I only recently found out about this. There's this overview tab and you can post, you know, a description of the course, the module schedule, the assessment plan, some resources that they might find useful. And again, by telling students this is here, they can come back to it and say, oh, what day of the week do we have our tutorial again? Or when's the next assignment going to be posted? I suppose in Brightspace, it's nice that we have this overview tab, but this could simply just be a PDF that you post for students that they can refer back to and um, when they um, have forgotten how to do something. So then my learning resources themselves are organized by week. So at the top, we have some general um, material and then we have week one, two, three, and so on. So I'm going to look at week two as an example, just to, um, show you kind of how I set out my um, set up my materials because again students commented that it was uh, particularly well organized and they appreciated that. So this course was a kind of blended learning approach. We'd have a lecture every Monday. So again, students are told on Monday we'll meet on Zoom at 2 p.m. Then on Tuesday they have their tutorial with their tutor. And then the asynchronous material this week is seven short videos and I give a description on the material that's covered in them. Then a reminder of what's coming up in the following week, some additional resources and the Zoom links. And again, you know, this is just kind of reinforcement, continuously telling them what's happening, so clear communication, what are we doing this week? What are we doing next week? Um, so, you know, you might think it's overkill, but students really appreciate 
this is this constant reinforcement of what's coming up and what's expected of me, which brings me to the checklist. So this is the one thing that students really, really appreciated. Brightspace has a nice tool for creating checklists, but again, you could just make this up in a Word document and the students can cross things off themselves. So each week I gave students a list of to do's and a list of learning objectives. And this way they can self regulate their learning and also it alleviates some of the kind of stress associated with asynchronous learning because often, you know, they aren't sure whether they're doing the right thing, whether they have covered all of the material. So the to do list uh, the to do tasks are typically you know, small tasks like attend the lectures watch these videos, which are usually five to 10 minutes long. And that way they have this kind of sense of achievement as they're progressing through and um, making progress. Going back to the resources themselves. Um, with each resource, I post a short kind of description of what's in the video. And so each of these ones are videos. And again, these are short five to 10 minute videos. And students, again, really appreciated short videos and also having a description. So when they're going back to revise something or if they're working through a problem and they say, oh, where do I find that? By reading the description, they can say, oh yeah, it was in this video or it was in that video. And then each week we also had tutorial exercises. So these relate to the week's material. The idea is that they test or they attempt them in their own time. And then the following week, the tutor will go through them with them. And afterwards, I post the solutions. So that's um, really it. I just wanted to give you kind of an overview of what I found worked. So the takeaways are clear and um, effective communication instructions. The other one, a good tip is the checklist. So students really liked uh, checklists and being able to self-regulate and then also the calendar events. So that's it for me. Um, okay, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I, I like the idea of the of the checklists. I think that's uh, that's a good one. I'm not sure we can do that on Blackboard because we've we've got Blackboard and uh, it, it yeah. doesn't look as good. Yeah, I think you can you can do them on Moodle, I think, but I'm not sure about Blackboard. <laughs> mm, right. Okay. Well, thank you very much.